plastic surgery and cosmetic procedures has it. There's the Zoom phenomenon, so people spend all day looking at their video feed, usually from the worst possible angle and the terrible lighting, and that takes a lot of patients to do something. 18-year-old Olivia Silverstein broke her nose playing soccer. She visited Dr. John Kerr about fixing it before she left for college. I'm so happy with how my nose looks. The doctor said this may be a good time for people who are considering cosmetic surgery to get it. People aren't uh, socializing as much and they're uh, walking around wearing masks, so it's actually an ideal time to recover from surgery. This is Inside Edition Digital.
nurse Eric was preparing to administer the COVID-19 vaccine to paramedic Robbie. What he wasn't expecting was a proposal from his longtime love. I told him he'd never be able to surprise me, and he completely proved me wrong. I knew I wanted to do it for quite a while. I just needed kind of the right moment to do it. I knew probably four months in that I wanted to marry him. When I found out that he was going to be doing the vaccines, I was like, oh, that would be kind of fun to tie in. Um, you know, because it was the end of the year, kind of, you know, hoping to be towards the end of the pandemic. Really, like, signified, like, oh. to build up, and in this case, it took 21 seconds to really jeopardize that. It happened at a checkers outside Baltimore, and it gets worse. After the employee wipes the butt on the floor, she spreads mayonnaise on it. Oh, this video has gone viral. I, like you, am appalled and disappointed by what I saw in that video. Now, checkers is in full damage control, releasing video of a smoke saying all the workers involved have been fired. And that they talked to the ringleader. She confirmed that she and her co-workers were playing around in the kitchen and the product was never served to a guest. The burger in question may not have been sold, but the spatula used to spread mayo on a dirty bun appears to be placed back in the mayonnaise container. The company told Inside Edition, we have high standards for food safety in our restaurants and it definitely does not meet those standards. I feel bad for their, you know, 19,000 other workers who will now probably have to suffer some repercussions of slower business because of that video. And how about this? The CEO of Checkers, Rick Silva, appeared on the show Undercover Boss. He worked anonymously in several of his restaurants, even making burgers. This isn't the first time a stomach-turning incident has happened at a fast food restaurant. This guy is seen bathing in the kitchen sink in 2008. These bikini clad fast food workers are taking a bath. In this video, a guy puts cheese up his nose and then puts on a sandwich. And this picture shows a man licking taco shells. And now this was the latest nasty video to join the blitz, wiping up the floor with a burger bun. <laughs> I'm mad. I'm hurt. A mother's anguish over the loss of her six-month-old baby named Brandon. She blames the Dallas, Texas 911 system and Google. I want them to take responsibility of my son's death. Brandon was in the care of a babysitter who says he failed and stopped breathing. That's when she called 911 three times within an hour and was placed on hold at one point for more than 30 minutes. I want the problem solved immediately. And if it takes a longer period of time, I want to know why. The city's mayor also blaming the cell phone carrier, claiming ghost calls made unintentionally from T-Mobile phone users, maybe why an operator couldn't be reached. The issues at the call center have been ongoing since November 2020. 
2016. In a statement, the company said it has been working daily on a permanent solution to the problem. Hey, hi, mommy. But for now, this mom is forced to bury her son six months after his birth. I would never want no mother, no father to go through the pain that I'm going through right now. For InsideEdition.com, I'm Katie Sheps. taking to the road this holiday season, these parents are warning about a little-known danger involving car seats. Tragically, it cost their daughter her life. After little Mia was dropped off at daycare, a worker allowed the little girl to nap in the car seat. That mistake had deadly consequences. Yeah. Adorable little Mia was a dream come true for Lisa and Chad Smith. I was so excited to have a little girl. Mia, but the couple's happy world collapsed when 17-month-old Mia was found lifeless in her car seat. It didn't happen in the family car, but at daycare. This is like lightning striking our soul. This isn't something that we had any idea could possibly happen to us. It was during nap time that Mia was left unsupervised, strapped in a car seat on the floor like this. Her daycare provider, Valerie Wackerly, stepped out to a doctor's appointment. When she returned, Mia wasn't breathing. Her husband called 911. One of the babies in my wife's daycare is not breathing and her face is purple. My wife didn't get her. Is she breathing yet? She's got coming out of her mouth. Her toes are blue. At the hospital, the prognosis was grim. The couple had no idea that Mia had been found in a car seat at daycare until cops told them. I literally chased the investigator out of the room and down the hall and I asked, are you saying she was in a car seat? Mia died two days later. I fell to the floor and I just absolutely <laughs> cried my heart out. The official cause of death was positional asphyxia. It's, it's basically when you don't have your head in the right position to be able to breathe. At Cook Children's Hospital in Dallas, registered nurse Sharon Evans uses a doll to illustrate how a child could suffocate. Their head can actually fall forward and block off their airway. They start moving around and they can get themselves caught or trapped. Sometimes they can slide down and something on the harness could also cause them to strangle. Evans points out that car seats are carefully designed to be used on a base and have indicators like this to help you to secure it safely in a car. They're designed for a crash. They're not designed for a child to sleep in. In court, Valerie Wackerly pled guilty to involuntary manslaughter. We knew from day one there was no malicious intent, but she made a series of wrong decisions that cost my daughter her life. Lisa and Chad are now raising two boys. They want Mia's death to be a warning to everyone. Never leave children unattended in car seats. Heartbreak doesn't even begin to describe it. To know that this was so preventable. This should never happen to any family.
study study revealed that each year about 3,800 people go to the emergency room for pizza-related incidents. The causes range from slicing your finger while cutting a pizza to burning your mouth eating a hot slice. Be very careful, it's 550 degrees in here. Reporter Allison Hall got some pizza safety tips at Imperial Pizzeria in New York, New York. Tip number one, be very careful around a hot oven. Tip number two, let the pizza cool down before cutting in. What happens is the cheese and the sauce is extremely, extremely hot. If that cheese or sauce gets on your hands, you will have second degree burn. Get rid of me because, again, it's not jiggling. It's the sauce and the cheese has solidified a little bit. Uh, the crust has cooled down a little bit. And again, just take a simple little bite. Don't shove a big chunk of pizza in your mouth and gobble down. I know you're hungry. I know you want that pizza. You're I dying do. to have it. And then just a little bite to test it. Right. Do I need to blow on it or anything? If you like. <laughs> okay. It's hot, but not too hot. It's perfect. And it's not fine. And it's delicious. Thank you. Tip number three. Use a pizza cutter so your fingers won't get sliced. So now this is how we take the pie out of the oven. Again, you'll see it's still jiggling. It's still hot. And we'll place it into a box. A lot of people make a mistake. I cut the pizza, I give it to the customers, and this is what they do. They'll bring it up as a, as a suitcase so and, lean it. and lean it. And what happens, a lot of hot sauce or cheese can get on them and will burn them. Pizza isn't the only surprising food sending people to the emergency room. Topping the list of dangerous foods is fish. More than 15,000 injuries a year. Also on the list, can you believe, cake. Cake sends 1,700 people to the ER each year. Hamburgers lead to about 2,100 injuries a year, usually from people trying to separate the frozen patties. Cheese, yep, cheese sends 3,700 people to the hospital. Blame the cheese grater. Stephen Colbert cut himself using one during a cooking session. I'm Frank Proto from the Institute of Culinary Education shows us the safe way to handle these foods. I find when you put too much pressure like this, it can easily slip and break your hand. One thing that I do to ensure that I don't get cut is I will lay my grater on its side and lightly push away from myself. And those frozen burgers, put the knife away. I find that if you just take the two burgers and tap them, they usually fall apart. So stick, be safe, and don't end up in the hospital. That's amazing. Wow. Insurrection at the Capitol and President Trump's role in inciting it has led to consideration of something unprecedented in modern history, invoking the 25th Amendment to declare the president unfit and thus remove him from office. Calls to remove President Trump from office are growing louder today. He is clearly a president who has turned into a mad king. And at this point, I'm calling on all Republicans and conservatives who still have clout. We have to invoke the 25th Amendment. I join the Senate Democrat leader in calling on the vice president to remove this president by immediately invoking the 25th Amendment. CBS News was the first to report rumblings of the 25th Amendment, in which Trump's cabinet would remove him from office to be replaced by VP Mike Pence. Right, would you support the 25th Amendment against President Trump? It is uh, news that I am going to be very careful as I deliver it because uh, it, it is so um, incredible. The people around the president, uh, some of the highest members of our government, are discussing the possibility of invoking the 25th Amendment. Deborah spoke with Margaret Brennan, moderator of Face the Nation. What would be involved if the 25th Amendment were to be successfully invoked? For this to actually happen, there would have to be a majority of those senior advisors, those cabinet officials, who go to the vice president and say, we collectively believe that the president should not remain in office. The vice president would have to agree to that. The president can object, and if he objects, then Congress has to weigh in, and a two-thirds majority in the House and the Senate would have to be on board with doing so.
told her she was having a girl. The mom thought everyone was joking, and she couldn't quite wrap her head around it until she saw him for herself. After the initial shock wore off, of course, it didn't really matter what sex the baby was. The Australian couple received a lot of pink kiss during her nine months of pregnancy. The photographer, Jessica Jackson, says in 